Singapore Airlines' first class is often considered as one of the best first class experiences available today. The airlines operates its first class service using both Boeing 777 and A380, but the A380 is considered to be the most popular option because it features the exclusive suites. I wanted to experience the first class offerings on both the Boeing 777 and the A380 by flying them back to back over two consecutive days aiming to compare the two and share my thoughts. Before diving into the details, let's set the stage for what you can expect from my videos. I am a firm believer in the power of flight crew to significantly influence your experience in a premium cabin, whether you're flying Emirates First Class or Iberia Business Class. The level of service provided by the cabin crew can either elevate your journey to an unforgettable experience or conversely, diminish it with neglect and mediocre service. Both of these can leave a long-lasting impression of the airline. In my evaluation of first-class experiences, I assign only a 30% weight to the tangible aspects of the flight, such as the seat and amenities, also called as the hot product. The intangible elements like service and overall experience, which I call the soft product, constitute the remaining 70% in my books. To ensure authenticity in my reviews and to capture the natural behavior of the cabin crew, I don't use bulky cameras or elaborate mounting equipment. Instead, I solely rely on my iPhone to take photos and videos, jotting down my observations and insights directly on my phone. This prevents the crew from knowing that I'm filming and treating me any differently than they would treat any other passenger and it also allows me to share a true to life account of my flying experience and I can provide you with a clear unfiltered view of what to expect. My first leg from Sydney to Singapore was on the 777. My second leg from Singapore to London was also on the 777. Stick with me till the end and I'll tell you a little secret on how I converted my 777 first class booking into the A380 suites booking. At Sydney Airport, Singapore Airlines offers an exclusive first-class lounge, which is segmented into four distinct sections, including a dining section and a special place designated for plane spotting. The lounge exuded a premium feel, aligning well with Singapore Airlines' reputation for excellence. The food and service was A+, as expected. After spending about an hour in the lounge, I proceeded to the boarding gate, which was, in my opinion, pure chaos. However, the moment I stepped onto the aircraft, the ambience shifted dramatically. Upon informing the flight attendant that I was seated in 1C, the FA immediately addressed me by my surname without needing to glance at my boarding pass, which actually took me by surprise since my name often poses pronunciation challenges to others. I'm usually a window seat kind of guy and was not happy about my 1C but I didn't have a choice at the time of booking. Before I could sit down, the FA politely inquired if I might entertain the idea of switching to a window seat. The reason? A lovebird duo in first class wished to nestle side by side. My eyes popped with excitement and I practically leaped at the opportunity to switch spots. The Singapore Airlines' Boeing 777 first class seat is probably the widest seat you can find on an airplane first class. They are exceptionally spacious and comfortable and offer ample leg room to stretch out. It's not as private as the suites on the A380, but still you can tell they were designed with privacy in mind. The aisle seats are positioned slightly forward, effectively limiting your view of your neighbor. Typically, airlines refrain from offering premium champagnes or alcoholic beverages before departure because they have to pay taxes on these expensive drinks in the country of departure. So many airlines opt for simpler offerings like water and orange juice. Singapore Airlines, on the other hand, did not hold back and went above and beyond. The flight attendant not only presented me with Krug initially, but also encouraged me to sample the Comte du Champagne, allowing me to compare the two while savoring some premium candied walnuts and macadamia nuts. The next gesture by the flight attendant is what I call the distinction between great service and truly exceptional first class service. The flight attendant brought me three red wine bottles available on board and he said, Sir, you've pre-ordered the Lobster Thermidor, which is an excellent selection. 
Today we have these three red wines. Do you have a preference for which you would like to enjoy? I know it's a bit early to decide, but I can open the bottle now to let the wine breathe. If you like my recommendation for a wine that pairs well with the lobster, I'd be glad to suggest this one. This caliber of service is precisely what one anticipates in first class. We then took off into the beautiful Sydney skies. While this is not a complete review of the cabin, I want to share some highlights. As mentioned before, the seat was exceptionally wide, offering enough space to comfortably fit another person besides me. First class passengers enjoyed complimentary Wi-Fi, which was straightforward and super easy to connect, unlike Lufthansa, and provided a very reliable service for the entire journey. The remote for the in-flight entertainment wasn't as sophisticated as what's found in the suites, yet it functioned smoothly. The charging ports were well placed at convenient locations and were fully operational. There were storage compartments for personal items, keeping everything you might need during the flight within easy reach. About 45 minutes after takeoff, meal service started with one of my favorite first class appetizers, caviar. I made a whole video on how airlines serve caviar in first class and if you're interested to check that out, I'll leave the link in the description. In that video, I kind of made fun of Singapore Airlines for piling caviar on top of scrambled eggs, which looked very unappetizing. But this time, Singapore Airlines nailed it. This was full caviar service with all the accompaniments and a shot of chilled vodka. By the way, if you're flying Singapore Airlines, do not pass up on their garlic bread. They are the best garlic bread you can ever have at 40,000 feet. Caviar service was followed by a seared kingfish salad and a white onion and thyme soup. Then the star of the show, Lobster Thermidor, made its entrance. Singapore Airlines' Lobster Thermidor is often highlighted as a standout dish by every blogger and blogger out there. You can request this using the Book the Cook service, which is available for both first class and business class passengers. The dish itself is actually a classic French recipe that involves a creamy mixture of cooked lobster meat, egg yolks and brandy stuffed into a lobster shell and this is broiled until it becomes golden. It was rich in flavor, the meat was tender and the seasoning was perfect. Just when you thought the culinary spectacle had reached its peak, it hadn't. The dessert which was popcorn cheesecake accompanied by yogurt sorbet, was presented in the most remarkable and captivating manner. This demonstrates the meticulous attention to detail and the dedication of the flight attendants to ensuring your luxury experience is nothing short of exceptional. After my meal, I was ready to take a nap and I asked the flight attendant to make my bed for me. Unlike other planes where you can make the bed yourself, in Singapore Airlines' 777, you have to seek the cabin crew's assistance as they have to flip the seat and transform it to a bed. I went to check out the restroom, which actually was nothing special like the A380's huge dressing rooms as I might call them, but was clean and adequately stocked with everything you need. I always appreciate when airlines provide real towels instead of paper towels in the first class cabin and Singapore Airlines did not disappoint. I changed into the provided Lalique PJs which were soft and very comfortable. When I got back to my seat, my bed was made and included a mattress pad, a couple of plush pillows and a duvet. Super comfortable and inviting. After a good two hours of sleep, I woke up for some tea and biscuits. The cabin crew insisted I try the roti and chicken curry from the menu along with the infamous Singapore sling and who am I to say no to this? Here's a fun fact about the world-renowned cocktail Singapore sling. It originated from the Raffles Hotel in Singapore in the early 20th century. Its creation is attributed to Game Tong Boon, a bartender working in the long bar at Raffles Hotel around 1915. The original recipe was developed as a way to offer a socially acceptable drink for women in a time when etiquette dictated that women should not consume alcohol in public. 
The Singapore sling was designed to look like a fruit juice and it was actually a cleverly disguised cocktail made out of gin. As we commenced our descent, the breathtaking views of Singapore Island unfolded beneath us, marking the beginning of our journey's end. The super awesome FAs waved goodbye as I deboarded the plane and I strolled into the world's best airport. Now before I jump into the next leg, let me let you in on my little secret. Remember I told you in the beginning that my goal was to fly both the 777 and the A380 first class cabins but ended up booking 777 on both legs? I did that because I wanted to book the Saver level award flights and did not want to splurge on Advantage awards. For those who are new to Singapore award flights, here is a quick refresher. Singapore first class award seats can only be booked through Singapore Airlines' own frequent flyer miles called Chris Flyer Miles. Unlike Lufthansa, Singapore Airlines does not release its first class seats to its partner airlines. Singapore Airlines offers two primary types of award bookings through its Chris Flyer program. They are called Saver Awards and Advantage Awards. Saver Awards require fewer miles compared to Advantage Awards, but their availability can be very limited. Advantage Awards require more Chris Flyer miles than Saver Awards, but offer greater flexibility and availability. To give you an idea, a Saver Award from Singapore to London will cost you 141,000 Chris Flyer miles, while an Advantage Award for the same route will cost you 225,000 miles. So yes, for the second leg from Singapore to London, I secured Saver Awards for 141,000 miles on the 777, which was scheduled to leave Singapore at 12.15 p.m. When I landed in Singapore from Sydney, I pulled out my phone and I checked Expert Flyer to see if there were still seats available on the A380 that left at 9.15 a.m. Expert Flyer showed me that there was still one first-class suite available. So I walked over to the transfer desk in Terminal 3 and politely asked the transfer agent if he would be willing to switch my ticket to the earlier A380. He took my 777 boarding pass, worked his magic, made the switch and gave me the new A380 boarding pass right away. I was extremely impressed as to how seamlessly this worked. I was told by a friend that usually 48 hours before travel, the seats are under airport control and the airport employees can work their magic to help you out and that's certainly true in the case of Singapore Airlines. So I got my new boarding pass for the A380, a 14 hour flight from Singapore to London and headed straight to the private room. The private room is Singapore Airlines' most exclusive lounge, located within the Singapore Airlines' Silver Chris Lounge at Changi Airport in Terminal 3. Access to the private room is restricted to passengers traveling in Singapore Airlines as suites or first class. This ensures an exclusive experience for anybody inside this lounge. I spent a lot of time in the private room and I walked to the gate in the last minute, in fact, after boarding started. Thankfully, there was a separate line for suites passengers and I was able to walk in without having to queue up behind economy. As I entered the aircraft, I was greeted by three different flight attendants and one of them escorted me to my suite. If you're seeing the suites for the first time, trust me, you'd be struck by a sense of awe and wonder. This cabin is an epitome of what a first class product should look like. 
a revolving leather recliner, a 32-inch high-definition touchscreen monitor, Bang & Olufsen noise-canceling headphones, a wireless handheld tablet to control the entire cabin, including the lights, a separate bed, all within a private space secured by sliding doors. This is one of the highest level of privacy you can get in a commercial airplane. The A380 pushed back on time and soared into the Singapore skies, starting the clock for the 14-hour pampering at 40,000 feet. This was a morning flight and so breakfast was served and it was followed by a full dinner service before landing. Now, would you be surprised if I said my 777 first class experience was actually better than the A380 suites? Ouch! Well, here are my reasons. Let me start with the hard product. The concept of an enclosed suite featuring a separate bed and a leather reclining couch is undeniably appealing, but it comes with its own share of functional limitations. You could recline the leather couch only when you're in three positions. When it's set for takeoff, set for dining, or set to watch the big screen. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but the mode to watch the big screen does not directly align with the screen, even with the screen rotated towards you. So you'd still have to tilt your head to watch something, which was quite uncomfortable and annoying after a while. The iPad remote, while innovative in theory, fell short in practice. Most of the times, I wasn't sure how to get something to display on the big screen. Let me say it wasn't very user-friendly. After about five hours, the iPad remote stopped working completely. I got a message saying it was locked and the FAs didn't know how to unlock it. They reset the whole entertainment system a few times, but it still didn't work. They offered to move me to the adjacent empty suite 3F, but I declined as I had my own iPad with me with some downloaded Netflix content. Interestingly, I encountered none of these glitches on the 777. The pullout bed was great, but was actually narrower than the 777's bed. I prefer watching movies in the bed at a slight incline, which was not possible on the A380's pullout beds. The complimentary Wi-Fi did not work on the A380. The cabin crew first said there was some kind of a technical problem and it would not work for the entire flight. Then they said they would restart it. They've asked the pilot to restart it and it might work. And it ended up working finally but still it was super spotty and wasn't as good as the 777. Now let's move on to the part that I consider the most important, the soft product. One significant challenge I observed with Singapore Airlines' A380 service is the suboptimal passenger to cabin crew ratio, a situation that becomes particularly noticeable when the suites are fully booked. The 777 had two dedicated first class cabin crew for four passengers and the purser helped out on top of that. 
Never once did I feel I wasn't attended to. My drinks were always full. I was checked on multiple times. Even water bottles were replaced when I had just taken a couple of sips out of them. I woke up from a nap and 15 seconds later, I had someone check in on me to see what I wanted. On the other hand, the A380, which had five passengers that day, had only one dedicated flight attendant with the purser helping out. Occasionally, I saw a few business class cabin crew lending a helping hand. The closed suite doors compounded the issue, potentially leaving me and other passengers unnoticed for extended periods. This recent flight wasn't an isolated incident, as I've noticed in my other two suites experiences as well. To start with, breakfast service began 90 minutes after takeoff. I guess the FA had to go an order from 1A and it probably took her that much time to get to me in 2F. The drinks I asked for were forgotten and I had to remind her a second time. Drinks were never refilled proactively unless asked. You could tell the FA was a little overwhelmed because she was serving five of us. It was clearly not her fault, I'm not blaming the FAs, but Singapore Airlines needs to staff the suites cabin appropriately to reduce their workload and provide the same level of service provided in the 777 first class cabin. To me, the A380 suites treatment felt more like business class. The attention to detail simply wasn't there. The difference in service and attentiveness from the cabin crew on the 777 compared to the A380 was like comparing night to day with the 777 crew providing a far superior experience. Here's a question for you. Do you think I had low expectations for the 777 and high expectations for the A380 and this review is just a result of expectation bias? If you've had a chance to fly in both these cabins, please share your thoughts with me in the comments section. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any of my future adventures. See you in the skies. Thank you.